already I'm at the point where I'm like, is it worth using my Corvin? If I drink it halfway, is that worth it? But you know, just for the sake, we're gonna use it. Oh yeah. Will that be enough wine for me? I hope so. Today we're gonna be talking about Rioja, Spain, which is slightly a sore subject for me because I was supposed to go in 2020 and I didn't. But I'm gonna put that intention out there. It's a new year. I know Rioja is not a fan favorite in the US and eh, I can kind of see why. There are some duds out there, but I would like to put it out there that I think people need to revisit Rioja, give it another chance because there's a lot of new exciting wines coming out changes to the styles and Rioja are one of the best bargains out there. So we'll get into that. Today I am drinking, you probably have seen this brand before, it's pretty mainstream. Marquez de Caceres Rioja. This is a Gran Reserva 2012. I got this baby for $26.99. And that is such a good deal. Like, please, please, someone in the comments tell me what wine that you could buy for $26.99 that is 10 years old. Yeah, it's okay, I'll wait. And okay, so yeah, this is like a mainstream producer, but like if you extrapolate it to like a better producer, like Muga, you probably have seen their middle tier bottles, but they also have like a very high tier wine, Gran Reserva, that would be like $90-ish. If you stack that against a 2010 great producer of Bordeaux, that's like a thousand bucks. Is that wine 10 times better than the Muga Gran Reserva 2010? Doubtful, doubtful. Is it better? Yes, it is better, but 10 times better? Think about it. But it just isn't like as high profile as Burgundy's and Bordeaux's, right? Let's be honest. It's like dark cherries, plums, dried leaves, some leather, and even by the color, not super dark like that Napa wine that I had. Mm, good balance of acidity, nice tannins. Oh, medium body, just an overall great wine. Ah, so good. All right, so let us learn about Rioja. Let's get into it. So Rioja is one of Spain's most famous region. It is one of two DOCAs, and DOCA is basically the highest quality designation in Spain. Similar to a DOCA is a DOCG in Italy. What does DOCA really mean? It means that there were a lot of qualifications that this wine needed to go through in order to be called a Rioja. From everything from how the grape was grown, the size of the barrel, the bottling requirements, it's like all of that is regulated for a DOCA. So Rioja is located in northern central Spain. It is a river valley. The Ebro River runs through it and there are mountains that flank it on the north and the southern side. Since it's in the mountains, basically, uh, there's higher altitude and a lot of sunlight in it. So they are able to grow their grapes for much longer. Rioja is similar to Bordeaux in the sense that they blend their wines with different grapes. The main grape is Tempranillo. Tempranillo, Tempranillo. Whenever you think about Rioja, you think about Tempranillo. So Rioja can actually be white, red, or rosé. Now Rioja, out of any wine region in the world, on average age their wines longer in oak. One thing that is very distinct about Rioja and Spain is the aging requirement. Like a lot of times you'll see Reserva, Gran Reserva on some bottles and literally it means jack. Does not mean anything, it just sounds cool. So people are like, let's slap this on. But like I was saying, DOCA, very, very strict. So they actually do mean stuff in Spain. So let's break it down. Crianza 
are very tasty everyday drinking wines great great value there also are some bad prianzas out there if you see anything less than ten dollars don't 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 touch it why okay so crianza means that it's been aged for at least two years and one year being an oak so like if you think about it like aging usually means like you know they had to put money into it so when something is like less than ten dollars you're like just doesn't it just doesn't compute but usually crianzas you know typically go for around like 13 to 16 dollars really great value easy everyday drinking wines are fruity they're not that oaky because right they didn't touch oak for that long next would be reserva so reserva means that it has been aged for three years and one year again in oak so a little bit more richer flavor they picked it from better grapes you will get more of those spice flavors in a reserva and then grand reserva is the highest and that means it's been aged for five years two of those years being in oak at least this is a minimum some producers will do it for even longer so if you think about it like even before you see it this ground reserva has to have been aged for five years there's not that many other wines that like do the aging for you now the oak reputation has kind of been like a double-edged sword people just like weren't really into like how oaky they were. Rioja kind of saw what Ribera del Duero did, their neighbor to the south. They also make their wines out of Tempranillo, but because it's a warmer climate, they typically have darker wine, more tannins, more alcohol, more flavor, and Ribera del Duero wines have been doing really great. So Rio has been kind of like rethinking how they do their wines. Traditionally, they're kind of like a cross between Burgundy and Bordeaux. They have like the Burgundy earthiness and the cherry flavors, but then the body is more like a Bordeaux. And now there's a modern twist on Rioja that is much more new world like. So more fruit forward, less oak. They use more riper fruits, AKA more body into their wines. So most producers produce a traditional and a modern version. Sorry, I've been like talking too much. I need to drink a little. So I really think people need to like revisit Rioja, see what's out there because like, let's say you just go for just one and you had a bad experience, you know, maybe that was just a bad one. I think there are a lot of great, good value wines out there that you don't have to spend too much. Like this was $26.99, great wine. If you spend between 20 and 30 bucks, you can find a really good Rioja. If you spend upwards from like 40 to 60, you can get a great Rioja. So like you don't have to spend as much to get good, value so i think that's why riojas are always like kind of a good pick especially if you don't want to spend too much money as always please comment down below of what other regions i should cover or what rioja producers that you are really keen on right now please hit that thumbs up button and like my video and subscribe to my channel. And cheers, you guys. I'll catch you guys later. Uh, kind of wanted like another glass, but I shouldn't. This is, I guess this is the good thing about the Corbin. It stops me from just pouring more. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> what if I just like started talking and did my lessons like this close? All right, let me make sure I don't knock this glass down. Let me clean my needle. Oh, that sounds gross. Clean my needle, but I need to do that. Why?